Hello, everyone, and welcome to Metacampus Live. My name is Tammy Maggs, and I will be your host for this session. Uh, I'm so excited to get started, but before I do, let's just talk a little bit about the room. I can see you've already found the emojis. I see those coming up. And over to the right, we do have the chat section. We would love for you to use that chat section and the emojis to engage with us and let us know um, that you're enjoying what you're hearing. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask those right in the chat section. And we will move those over to the Q&A and get to those at the end of the presentation. So how the presentation will work, it'll be about a 30 minute interview with our guest, and then we will open it up to about a 15 minute questions and answers session. If we do run long on our interview, we will get to as many questions as we can. All right, so let's talk about what we have today, what our presentation is. So we are Web3 in Hollywood. What an amazing topic, and I'm so excited uh, to talk to our guest today. So Sherry McCracken. Sherry is a producer based in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and she's an innovator at heart. With a background in both technology and filmmaking, Sherry is leading several Web3 initiatives, including a community film incubator called NAX, Never Alone NFT. It is also called Never Alone Experience, where she is providing innovative ways to monetize filmmaker content. In 2018, Sherry drove into the blockchain world and began building models to support the creator economy. She signed her first smart contract in KYC to put the suspect onto breaker.io, which we will talk about in, in early 2019. She's produced three feature films with her partner, Dina Engel, and production partner, Modak Spring. So we are going to invite Sherry to the stage and we will uh, go ahead and get into it. Hello, Sherry. G, 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 oh, there we go. GM, GM, everybody. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have you here today and I can't wait to dive into it. But before we do, let's just go back a little bit and talk about your history. So when did you get started in film? Well, I think my history goes way back because I was shooting a brownie camera, you know, when I was in my teens. And my father taught me how to use uh, manual film cameras back then, right? So, um, you know, it's been a, a great journey. Um, even, you know, back in those days, you had to understand technology, you know, and math uh, to actually make uh, a film or take a picture. Um, so that's really when I started this journey. Um, I've always been a creator, but I also am a IT person. Uh, so I have the right and left brain that my dad gave me. Um, and, um, you know, I've used it throughout my life. So I've always been an innovator, a disruptor before we even started using that word, um, even in corporate uh, pharma, which I ended up in for quite a while. I was always an innovator and I was always breaking the rules. Um, so that's why, you know, film, film three, web three is so exciting for me because uh, that's what I love to do. Break rules, make new models, uh, lift up people, you know, um, be seen as filmmakers. And that's a big deal for me. Did I answer the question? That's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so let's talk about your film history, right? So three feature films. Wow. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Sure. So um, with my photography background, um, my our best friends, one of them is a writer and a director. And he said, you know, why don't you go out and do some location scouting with me? And I'm like, eh, not really doing the whole film thing. I'm really into stills. I don't know. He's like, come on, come on the journey, you know, help me out. So I did. And I got the bug, you know, and I went from stills to like, let's make movies. Um, and th that's really how I started with friends. I mean, independent filmmaking is just that. I mean, you get, you know, you connect 
you take the resources you have available to you in your circle um, because you don't have money. Um, so you want to tell a story together. So how do you do that? You know, people bring uh, their experience. They bring their ideas. They bring uh, their equipment. And, uh, you know, we made our first feature. And we had to raise money in the old fashioned way, you know, even there wasn't even much of Kickstarter back then. Um, so it was more of like in real life, you know, IRL going up, you know, kissing babies, shaking hands, all that kind of stuff that you have to do uh, to raise money for your project. And uh, once I got into it and I was on set, I was like, this is it. You know, this I have this bug now. I got to make films. Uh, so that's sort of like how it all started. And it really was with friends. And that's why, you know, Web3, and we'll get into this, is all about, for me, community and how do we create together. That's amazing. So we know we have three feature films, but there's also a TV show that you're producing, correct? And right. let's talk about that. That's 48 Blocks. So let's talk about where that came from, the idea for that, and where we are in stage of production. Sure. So um, our first feature, just to just to touch on that just a little bit, uh, like I said, with with our best friends, um, we were um, fortunate enough to get to get Mackay Pfeiffer. Um, you, you really need names, <laughs> no matter what. You need to have some names because you got to get eyeballs, and to get eyeballs, um, that means having you know some recognizable faces. So we have Mackay Pfeiffer, but we also were able to get a little known actor at the time, Sterling K. Brown, who then broke out, of course, and This Is Us, but he was in our first feature uh, as a lead role. Um, and I learned so much um, from Sterling because he was just a kind, and, and still is, I'm sure, even though he's a big celebrity now, kind, giving person, you know, and, um, you know, together uh, we learned um, how to just bring people together and make them feel welcomed and valued. And, you know, that was the big part leading to, to the next steps of my journey is just seeing people that valued other people and wanted to create with people. And it didn't matter what role you had, you were important. Um, and that included, you know, my, my fame to claim, my claim to fame is that I did Sterling K. Brown's laundry. I mean, because you have to do everything in independent filmmaking. And, and that means doing other people's laundry sometimes, you know, as a producer or, you know, or bringing them food or or taking them to a yoga class. Um, you know, it's all that kind of stuff. So we did that. We, we made two features after that. And then um, I decided, you know, binging was really becoming popular. You know, and people were moving away from um, features so much that, you know, we used to all just watch movies, but now there's these television shows. And now there's this addiction to, you know, binging and when is my next show going to drop? And I got to see that episode. And I thought, why not do a, a, a pilot for a series? We moved to Atlantic City, my wife and I. We were looking at ways to make films in Atlantic City versus Pennsylvania. Um, and we thought, hey, let's try something here. So I created a show called 48 Blocks and uh, trying to pitch it now as a series. We shot the pilot right before the pandemic. And then, of course, it wasn't easy. Um, it's never easy to sell a concept, but during COVID, it was almost impossible because you couldn't fly to LA. You couldn't have your meetings. You couldn't you know, meet somebody at Starbucks and tell them all about your, your great project. Um, so... Um, 48 Blocks now is three years old, right? We shot it three years ago. So now it needs a revamp. And so I'm working now with some new people uh, that have joined the group. Um, one of them is from Web3. Um, and we're working on rewriting some of the, the storylines and the characters. Um, so hopefully we'll be out pitching again within you know the next couple months. And I'd really like to see this you know sold of course, um, to really highlight the storytelling uh, possibilities in Atlantic City. There are so many. And, um, you know, every day there's a new story here. So we really need to get out there and people really need to seek, you know, Atlantic City uh, for more than just casinos. Okay, so 
I can't wait to get into how you see Web3 playing a role in Atlantic City. And then we're going to get on to what you're really doing in Web3 and how you're disrupting things. But before we do that, I would love to share my screen and let you all watch the trailer to 48 Blocks. So we are going to show you. You can get it to work. There we go. All right, guys. Here we go. Uh oh. Oh, maybe it wants to be a silent okay. movie. <laughs> All right. So I apologize. I It was playing. I could hear it, but there was no sound. Um, but we will be happy to share the link with you at the end of the presentation so that you can go and watch it yourself, um, along with some other links where you can find Sherry and the things that she's working on. Um, so let's talk about the transition from traditional filmmaking into how you ended up here in Web3 and, and what's going on uh, with tra that transition? Well, you know, I was discouraged uh, with the, the process or lack thereof for independent filmmakers to figure out how they can be seen, how they can get distribution um, and how they can monitor most off, uh, most importantly, uh, monetize, uh, you know, their content, um, which we, we just don't do. Look, we, we received distribution for all three of our features, which was a major, major hurdle. You know, um, I'm just happy that we were able to do that. A lot of people don't get distribution. It's a very hard thing to do. Uh, but at the same time, the distribution deals uh, did not work in our favor. And even though, you know, with The Suspect, our first film, we, we had a pretty big uh, distributor uh, take us on. i uh, super excited about that at the time. But being, you know, first time in, really didn't understand the ownership that they have over your product, right? So we signed a deal for like 15 years and not realizing, you know, again, the money sounded good, the opportunity sounded good, but you know, we didn't realize that for 15 years, we can't, it's not really our IP. We can't go and advertise it the way we want to advertise it. We can't do go and do community building. I mean, they redid the cover of our first film. I didn't even recognize our film, you know, because they think this is how it's going to sell. We're going to put AK-47s on the cover, right? There's no AK-47s in our film. And, you know, we're going to oh, put no. pictures of futuristic cities. And I, I'm just like, what is this? Whose film is this? You know, um, and that's what they can do because of the deal. And they're going to do whatever they can to sell your film, which is great. Um, especially internationally. And at the time, the international deals were where the money was. That's changing now, um, but that's what it was about. So you have to have a name, you know, a face of somebody that people recognize. And then you have to have, you know, things that draw people in that might not even be part of your film. So that was really discouraging. Then when Sterling K. Brown broke out, I mean, in one Emmys and, you know, he was a major, you know, celebrity. We couldn't even take that celebrity, that fandom, that that opportunity and and go out and make, you know, those pitches with our film on social media or anything. Because, again, our hands were tied. We didn't have that that right over our own IP. I mean, that just in my mind is just like sucks. And most people don't realize this going in, 
you know, because you want to tell your story. You want to make a film, right? You want to go out there and do what you love doing. But then there's all this stuff on the back end that most people don't realize until they're in it and they get taken advantage of. Uh, there's a podcast called Indie Film Hustle. I used to listen to all the time. They talk about predator distributors and that's really what it feels like. So when I heard about Web3, blockchain at the time, um, you know, crypto, smart contracts, KYCs, I'm like, this is what I need to be looking at. We need to be able to find a better way to monetize our content as filmmakers. How are we going to do this? So I jumped all in because, you know, um, I came from um, dot com web two, right? I, I did a lot of work in web two uh, and really was involved with a lot of dot com companies out in San Francisco. Um, when I was part of pharma, you know, I made money, I lost money, you know, everything was like the wild, wild west. And I, I find that this is similar, right? We're reinventing. We know there's better options out there, but we have to prove them. And there's going to be success and there's going to be failure, but we got to get out there and try because that's the only way we're going to make a difference for creators. So I love that. And I, I think just when you were talking about the lack of control that you have over your own product, um, you know, that is what Web3 is disrupting, right? That is the change, people taking back the power and the control. So um, we've talked about your films and we've talked about the TV show. And now we have this exciting new adventure that you have already done season one. Now you're getting ready to hop into season two, right? right. And that little project is going to be, is becoming a huge project. And that is NAX, which is the Never Alone Experience. Um, and I am so proud to say that Metacampus has joined as a partner at, uh, to help bring this to life because we also, you know, empower and want to empower and educate people and get them to, to learn what is changing here? So can we talk about NAX? Oh, sure, sure. So, sure, sure. Um, so great. I, I love NAX. Um, you know, like I said, when I was in pharma, I was always disrupting. I used to make a lot of people mad, I think. Um, I think people were worried of change, right? So it's like, how, how, um, how can we help people change without them being fearful, right? Who moved my cheese, all that stuff. I don't know if you guys ever read that book, but it's like, how do we do that? Well, involve people. We cannot become the new gatekeepers. We have enough gatekeepers out there. We have to welcome people in. We have to make the, even the, you know, the descriptions, how we describe things, the terminology, the, the way that we do things, we have to make it more, um, easy to understand, you know, like explain it to me like I'm a fifth grader. Stop, you know, using these big words all the time and expecting people to want to join in with us. You know, um, NFTs to people are scary. I mean, I work, you know, in mostly film too. I mean, because I'm trying to sell and right now, you know, it's like they're not going to listen to me when I talk about NFTs or blockchain. They just don't. So it's like we have to start opening those doors. And I think with Never Alone, we start doing that because, you know, one of my intentions was to be able to onboard people um, into Web3 without them even feeling like it's this like scary world, but come in, make a film together and start seeing how we can change um, the world for independent filmmakers. And that's by doing, right? That's by interactions in real life interactions with people um creating together and that's what never alone does so how it all came to be is i was walking on the boardwalk one day because i i'm fortunate enough to live at the beach um and it's only two hours from new york city so i can still do my work and still have the beach and that's the, the power i think of the pandemic right working from home 
Um, so I was walking on the board when I walk and I thought, you know, when I first joined the, the movement, which wasn't even a movement at the time or started getting interested in Web3 technologies, there was there was really nobody on the journey with me that I could find, you know, and then along the way, I found other people that like, oh, they want to change the world, too. And but, you know, social media helped us bring it together. Right. I mean, Twitter really helped me meet people that were like minded. So even though Twitter is not Web3, it's in, you know, it enables us to find each other to do Web3 th things together. It's a tool for us. And so I'm walking on the boardwalk and I'm thinking, you know, I never feel alone anymore because independent filmmaking and really I think yeah, being an artist is mostly a solo activity. And with filmmaking, it's a solo activity. And then a bunch of people come together for maybe a couple of weeks and we make a film and then we all go away, you know, and then maybe we see each other in the future. But with Web3 and this community, I never feel alone. I feel like I can reach out. I can talk to someone at any time, day or night, 24 seven. You know, that's how I met Tammy um, and, and others that came into my world. Um, and I started feeling like, you know what? I'm not in this alone and I, one, I've always loved collaboration. This is how I'm going to meet people. And this is how it happens, right? And you want to meet people that are not just filmmakers, but people that are in music, right? Because we need music for films. We need product placement in films, which is art, right? So hanging um, artists work on our walls in this, on the set, um, that kind of stuff makes me feel like I'm never alone. I have this network of people that keeps growing and growing and we're gonna build things together. And so I reached out to someone I met um, in my film group. His name um, is Film Frico. And we, we, I supported one of his projects by buying an NFT at the time, very expensive, right? Back in the, back in the bull days, uh, even gas was like crazy like it is right now. Um, and we became friends. And so I reached out to him. I said, I have this idea, you know, there's going to be this film summit, film three summit, as we call it in LA last October, we're all going to be there. We've never met in real life. We're all creators. We're all filmmakers. Let's make a fucking movie. Sorry, <laughs> but that's what we should be doing. Let's walk the talk. We need to show people how things are different not just talk about how things are different. So let's make a movie. And we did it. And we had a, you know, a, a script contest on decentralized pictures, which we're going to be doing again, which is Francis Ford Coppola and Steven Soderbergh's company, their Web3 company. So bring in the elements that we're starting to see in Web3, right? And make them part of what we were calling at the time, the experiment. Right. So try out some new ideas, Web3 ideas. I got NFT artists involved. We made NFTs together um, to help sell, to raise money. We brought um, a piece of uh, Ali Sabat's work onto set. And, and, you know, it was a physical piece and we put it up there and it, it made our set. So bringing people in from all these different areas, we have. Um, an artist, a musician who did the closing credit song, who's actually the surrogate for Elton John. Um, and we found him through, you know, Web3. You know, one of the producers that joined the project, El Tusi, she's doing an NFT project with him um, and Adam Chester. And so his song ends up in our closing credits. And then that helps him, right? When he starts his launch, of his NFTs, he can then show, hey, you know, I have music placed in this Web3 film, you know, made by Web3 people. I mean, it's it just the stories are just going to keep getting better and better for how we are going to collaborate together. And those stories are going to help all of us be seen and lift all of us up and hopefully help us all monetize our content because 
without it, we can have all the passion in the world, but we still got to put food on the table. And I want to do what I love. And I love making films. And that's why we got to do this. Uh, okay. So I love everything about Never Alone Experiment. Or we say experiment, but it's experience now. now right? it's so experience. Never Alone Experience. Yes. yes. Because this yes. is season two. So season one was a short called Dollyville. Yes. And now we're on to season two, uh, which there's a space today, right? Yes. It's Twitter space today. to announce this. Yes. yes. Incredible. Um, so I, I do want to get into things, just, Tammy, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to forget this part. We, I, you know, I reached out to people that were, you know, in my spaces that I was in and had met um, people that are super interested in film, but never been on a film set. Um, there's someone named Karen, and um, she she's big into some of the film three activities, but she's never made a film. And so I reached out to her and I said, you want to be part of this? And she's like, hell yeah. What am I going to do, though? I don't have any experience. I said, just join in. We're going to find something for you. We're going to find something that fits, that you like to do, and you're going to learn. So it's also a learning platform. We are inviting people in to work with people with experience. I mean, I'm an experienced producer. Um, we had an experienced director. We had an experienced uh, DP, right? So start learning uh, along the way. It's school. Um, it's in real life school. It's not film. It's better than film school because you're making a freaking film, right? Um, so I, I see that too as the power of Never Alone is helping people. Uh, get into and follow their passion without having any experience. And, you know, in any uh, job, you know, it's a catch 22. You got to show that you can do something uh, to be able to get a job doing that. And so if you can build your portfolio, if you can jump in and say, I am, you know, I was scripty. That's what we gave her. The title is scripty. She was great with details. Um, and she did a great job and now she has an IMDB credit. That's amazing. Okay. Um, and you know what I love about it the most is that it really, I mean, it, and I guess this is what web three does, right? It takes it out of that film bubble of just people that are interested in film and you're opening this up to artists, to musicians, to maybe story writers that never thought they could be in a film. I mean, there's so many people that can now be a part of something. And this is season two. I can't even imagine what's going to happen in season three. But before we talk about that, I do want to get a couple questions that I want to ask before we get to the audience. Um, so we know Funding is an issue in Web 2. Um, in Web 3, I heard you talk about NFTs. Um, and now, you know, you have the sponsorship from a company like Metacampus because we support that learning and the interactive community experience. Um, how hard is it to get funding in Web 3? Are there challenges? Do you see mm -hmm. things changing? Like, let's talk about the funding. You know, funding is challenging no matter what. It's the producer's hardest job, right? Um, I think what has happened in the past is um, we have a group. Well, you know, it's a hashtag. It's a movement called Film 3. And, you know, so there, there are a bunch of us in there. Um, and I, I call it we drink the same Kool-Aid, right? So we, we all get it. We know what we're doing. We, we all get the ideas that we want to do and so forth. But there's a limited amount of resources and a limited amount of funding. So there's companies that, you know, are trying to build platforms to help, you know, more of a web three platform for distribution. Um, and, you know, there's, there's other groups out there that are doing things to support um, web three filmmakers, but at the same time, there's limited budgets, right? We're all trying to start businesses. That doesn't mean we have money, Right. It's like NAX. I don't you know, I don't have money. I have to go out and look for it, just like, you know, raising capital, you know, VC, all that stuff. Uh, this is the same thing. Um, so breaking outside of that little group of filmmakers 
um, is the important part. Partnering with people like Metacampus, that's why this is a big deal for me. And that really came through, like I said, meeting Tammy, I don't know, it was like a year ago on some other project and, you know, staying in touch and seeing how we can help each other. And, you know, I'm like, is there something here? And she's like, yes, there's something here. So going outside of those norms and seeing, and that's so web three, right? Like, how do we partner with other people? How do we support each other? It's going to benefit us both. Because, you know, Metacampus is all about teaching Web3, um, you know, concepts, technologies, ideas. Um, and this is something that we're going to be able to teach. You know, I'm hoping this is what we do with Metacampus, you know, teach some of this Web3 filmmaking um, ideas and concepts, right? Being able to spread, you know, the wealth and include people. Um, and get them involved in both places, NAX and Metacampus. So um, I think that's going to be the key. Um, some of these Web3 platforms, and sometimes I get in trouble because I speak my mind, but, um, you know, they're great. I love them. I wish them much success. There's several that I believe will make it. Um, but the problem is always going to be, how do you get eyes on your films? Because for me, I've been offered by several platforms. In fact, we are on several platforms with our features. Um, but if people don't know how to find you or who you are, or you don't have those names in your film, then you can be on any platform and still not make any money. Um, so those things, that's why I'm saying it has to be bigger. It has to be bigger than just film people doing this. Okay, I do want to get to a couple of the questions. There's so much to talk about. Like we could do 20 sessions with you. Um, and I can't wait for you to come back on because we want to talk about filmmaking and the use of AI because we all know AI is everywhere and it is entering every single um, you know career path and filmmaking is no different. So, but before we do that, right. And just, just ask to people, the point, I know we can't get deep into that, but our poster for Dollyville was made with, with AI. It, yeah, it just goes to show you that um, now is the time really to learn about AI, embrace AI and, and use it to help you with productivity and uh, creating things. Yeah. But all right, so let's get to one of the questions. How are the general, this is a good one. How are the general community of Hollywood responding to your drive to being Web3 in the world of Hollywood? Like what is going on there as far as Hollywood and Web3? Well, it's funny because, you know, um, last year, People were saying, oh, you know, we got to We got to beat Hollywood to this. We got to, you know, in fact, there was this whole fuck Hollywood. I, I hope I can use the, the F <laughs> word. Um, I am not of that camp. All right. I am in the um, let's leverage Hollywood because it, I, we, I don't think I know I can't tell series without Hollywood at this point. We need to, you know, continue to leverage uh, collaborate um, and work together for better solutions. It's not one or the other uh, in my mind. Um, and a lot of people don't know, but I had my first reason for getting into, you know, blockchain in 2018 was from someone in Hollywood who said, you know, Sherry, you know, um, I want you to go out and look at this thing, you know, and see where it's going. They had their eyes on us. I know firsthand because I was doing it, uh, right? We were involved with Breaker.io, uh, which was one of the first, um, I would say, blockchain company. It was definitely on the blockchain where we had a smart contract where we would be able to get residuals every time somebody watched our film. And I thought, that's great because I can see exactly and I can put in the smart contract you know, I have the following producers, I have a director, I have people that I want to get, you know, for them to make residuals uh, moving forward in any time somebody watches my film. So that happens because of blockchain automatically, right? And it could be a penny, 
but it still comes to you and it's transparent and it's a great way to do things. So um, that's really how I got involved. It was Hollywood. I can't say the names, but I'm going to tell you they are very big names. Okay. And I did this work kind of like undercover for them uh, for a couple of years. Uh, and that's how, like I said, I got involved with Breaker. Breaker has gone away, unfortunately. Uh, but I see them as the first real model of what this distributed, um, you know, residual um, taking care of creators model looks like. Uh, so that's that's what I feel about Hollywood. Um, they they're going to be slow going. They are not. Um, they don't adopt new ideas easily. You know, easily, especially if it doesn't benefit them. Right. Um, so, you know, we're always going to have that. You're going to always have that in the world. Uh, so that's why we have to show and not just talk. We have to show how we can make it different and better and how it's going to help them make money too. And I, I love what you said, and I'm going to relate that to, um, it's funny when brands, big brands started coming into web three, there was a lot of, oh no, you know, they're going to come in and take over. And and I think that that's missing the point is that we want people to join Web3 and we want to utilize, um, you know, partnering with these people and teach brands how to really transition from Web2 to Web3 and about community. So let's talk about community. There's a, a question here, even in Web3, audience still is, is a big challenge, right? And a lot of that has to do with how we build a community too with exposure. So can we talk about community and how that affects audience? Well, yeah, right. I mean, um, I think community can, can if it's built uh, in the right ways and it's inclusive and diverse and um, I think it can it can really change the way stories are made um, and seen because look at all the look at all the shows that you you watch and then they cancel them right well WTF I you know I care about those characters I want to see that second season if it was community driven we could drive those help drive those decisions you know they're just not seeing us we're not big enough. Right. So I think it's really important that communities, we find ways to bring communities together uh, to put that fan base in place before we even go uh, to a streamer. You know, if I can go, you know, right now they look at how many Instagram followers do you have or how many, you know, Facebook followers and stuff. Uh, uh, but why not have a whole community going into this thing? These are the people that care about it have those communities also help write characters. You know, there maybe some people don't want to do that. Some people just want to, you know, talk into the remote. I completely understand that. But there are other people that really want to be part of the storytelling. So let's open that up. And that's how you build community. You know, for Atlantic City, I want to open this up to Atlantic City, people that care about Atlantic City that would want to see a television series here, right? build that community. And we have the tools and we're making more and more tools now to build those communities. But when you give them ownership, and, and I don't mean just owning IP, but they have responsibility for a character, um, that just, that engages people. And that keeps people as your super fans that will promote you and get your, you know, get your story seen. Uh, so I love how you speak of community because, you know, we all know that that is so important, really. And, and that's the biggest mind shift from Web 2 to Web 3 mm -hmm. is that communities are interactive. People want to feel like they belong to something, um, which brings me to gatekeeping. Um, and we know that there's a lot of industries that gatekeep that gatekeep, right? Um, and I would assume Hollywood is no different. And I'm gonna ask you, do do you see that as like one of the biggest shifts moving into Web3 is less gatekeeping? And how do you ensure that there's none of that with your projects? Well, <clears throat> it's a tough one. I think that like I, I mentioned earlier, gatekeeping happens even in Web3. Um, it's, I think it's human nature 
you know, that you want to be seen, you want to be heard uh, for creating something, for being the first at something, for, I mean, it's just, don't you think it's, it's part of the human condition? Um, you know, we want to win, right? When we're, when we're growing up, we, we, we want to win the trophy. We want it, right? So there's going to be all that. I don't know if it just goes away because we call it Web3 and we call it community. Um, it's going to be an intention that we have to, we have to have these intentions to make it about community, to make sure we're always looking at the underrepresented, at the underserved and involving them in any way that we can. Because again, we have to walk the talk. And if we're not lifting each other up and supporting each other, I, and I don't mean just by buying NFTs, uh, it's important if you can, then do. You know, I do it. I do that because I can do it. Um, but I don't expect everybody to be in that position. You know, I'm older. Um, I've already had a career, <clears throat> so I have some money that I can support others. Um, but at the same time, just making people visible, giving them opportunities to speak, encouraging them to get involved. Um, you know, that's community being there for each other. Uh, because we can move mountains as a group, but by ourselves, well, it's a lot harder. So we're going to get into uh, the contracts because we just talked about smart contracts. So uh, one of the questions here is, do you use smart contracts with the cast and the crew? <clears throat> well, not yet. You know, there, there, there are meant as many questions or more questions than there are answers right now with this, right? So you get into this whole securities thing, um, you know, and taxes and I mean, the, all the parts that go with a traditional business, you know, we're up against. Do I want to do a smart contract? Yes. Should I try it? Yes. And that's why, you know, maybe part of this season two is looking at something like that. I mean, season one was, like we said, an experiment. Um, I didn't even have money to pay people going in, which like really drove me nuts because my whole you know platform is about monetizing and getting people paid. And I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to pay these people? I mean, it, it just ate at me. I mean, we had already done the film and everybody was just so happy that they were able to do the film together and they had such a good time. But I'm like, but this isn't the model that's go that's going to sustain our future, right? So um, that's when I did an NFT raise, and I made sure that I could give some money. It wasn't a lot back to the people that worked on the film. But this time, I'd really like to see us from the start have some sort of contract um, and have some way for them to make money on residuals. Now, <clears throat> shorts, excuse me are hard to make money on. Uh, people that are filmmakers, you know, understand this, that it, it's not easy. There's really no platform um, that's that successful right now where people make money off of short films. But I think that will change. I think there are going to be platforms and I think we can change that. We can make shorts. People like short content, but we're not, we're not making the most of that. You know, we got YouTube. Let's, let's do it differently. Let's think about how to do this differently. And at the same time, um, let's look at shorts. This is for uh, for NAX that can be have the potential to be made into a feature or a series. And then let's show how we can we can get there, you know, from from using a short as what I call a portfolio piece. Right. That helps you then get eyes on what you're doing um, and is your calling card. Uh, to get something bigger. So I think so, you know, we're going to try it. Yeah, yeah try like it. a plot. I just yeah, saw, like it's plot. hard for me to watch the comments, but I like that, like a plot. Yes. So here's the thing. Um, honestly, in, in Web3, we're all coming in. We're all transitioning to this new digital society and this new digital economy that we're moving into. And right now, even though there's no um, way to monetize um, and pay people what you want, 
really it's the exposure. It's the involvement. It's, it's being a part of something bigger, right? And look at what you're doing first. Whoever wins the script contest that we announced today, whoever wins that, they can then say, I am a part of this Web3 project where the community came together and I wrote the script. That right there is worth more than money. Um, and, and if we open it up to the art contest, to the artists and the music, and there's so many ways for community to come together and say, I was a part of this. And just having that on your resume, like we talk about, like people will stop wanting to see that, that regular resume and it'll be more like, what did you do? Is it on the blockchain? And how do you have proof of that? This is all going to be on the blockchain. That's proof yes, of work, yes. proof of experience. Mm. Yes, and we're actually working. Um, maybe we'll have um, this uh, gentleman on in the future, but his name is Will Fox, and um, he's a technologist, and he created um, a Web3 um, blockchain um, software project um, around um, being able to track what you've done on different film sets. So like an IMDb, but on the blockchain. And, you know, each time you do something on a film, you get, you know, a token that shows that you were a part of that. And then it's tracked. And I think that's just such an amazing idea because it also allows us to get away from the categories, the traditional categories in IMDb because they don't necessarily fit for what we're doing in Web3, but we're kind of stuck because that's where everybody goes to look for people, right? So we, again, need to start making these alternatives that can then be adopted when people are understanding the value of what this can be for us, right? To carry around in your digital wallet, here's everything, and this is the proof of the work I did on this project. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Okay, it, it is 1018. I do want to say, um, how can we find you, Sherry? Where are you? Um, our our lovely um, MetaCampus host, uh, our platform runner, Matt, will be adding the links, but tell us where we can find you. Where's the best place to get involved? Well, I, I'm on Twitter all the time. So that's the best place to find me at Sherry M Photo. I really want to change my handle, but this is, you know, in the beginning days of, of, of Twitter, I was a professional photographer. Uh, so that's how I was known. So I'm just kind of keeping it and going with it. Um, you can find uh, our company, Little Rock Films and Studios, which we are changing our name. I haven't told anybody but Tammy about this. We are changing it to We Three Films. Uh, but for right now, it's the really long Little Rock Films and Studio .com. So if you want to see more about myself and my wife, uh, who own the company, uh, my wife's an actress and a casting uh, director. Uh, so she casts shows in New York. Um, so, you know, it's a pretty cool background, too. So if you want to learn a little bit about us, you can go there. And then LinkedIn, I'm going to get better at. I'm on there, Sherry McCracken, and Tammy's going to help me with that. <laughs> Uh, and then NAX. Uh, so I would say, please follow NAX on Twitter. Um, it is never alone. NFT uh, is our handle. And uh, you can find us also as NAX. And, you know, things are changing as we go because we're growing and learning. And we just put our, we just got a new logo. You guys are kind of the first people to see it. Okay. So today on Twitter at 2 p.m. Pacific time and 5 p.m. Eastern time, Metacampus and NAX are coming together to launch a, a Twitter space to announce the kickoff of season two. I'm so excited. Cherry, I can't thank you enough for coming. So, so much knowledge. And I wish that we could continue to just do these every day because there's so much to get into. But I can't wait to have you back. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I love sharing knowledge. Um, I love mentor. I, I, I am all for... Don't keep your knowledge inside. Share it with others. Help others. Um, I, you know, I've been on the planet for a while. I've done a lot. I've seen 
you know, web one, web two, web three. Um, and, um, you know, I love to talk about it. I love, like I said, to, to help others, especially aspiring filmmakers, um, you know, women, um, LGBTQ, obviously, I mean, we, we are out there and we're going to make a difference. So thank you guys for being here. All right, everyone. Thank you again to Sherry, our guest, uh, Sherry McCracken. Yay! That was an excellent, excellent uh, presentation, a session. Um, I can't wait to have you back. Thank you, everyone that joined today, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.